I have a couple disk drives in a couple of machines. And in my case, I want to put the WH, the WSL disk data on a second drive, right? What I'd like to be able to do is use the bandwidth that exists on multiple drives on multiple buses and to do and make my give better performance for my WSL instances. I do the same thing for VMs if I run them in like VMware. So in this case, you know, how, do, how does this kind of set up? Well, WSL ends up with registered distributions. You know what? Let me make that bigger. WSL ends up with registered distributions. Each one of those distributions has a VHDX. By default, those are on the C drive. So also, I tend to run out of C space because I do all kinds of other things there. So the virtual disk exists there. So what we're going to need to do is to make this work. It turns out there's no way to edit this easily to do what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to un we're going to make a backup of these VHDX files. You know what? Did I not fix I fixed that? Let's try it one more time. See if it comes back. And we'll come here. Yeah, I fixed the typo down here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a backup of, we're going to terminate whatever distributions are running that we need to. We're going to make a backup and then we're going to unregister, which will wipe out this entire stack. And then we will go into an import and that'll create this same stack, but with the disk somewhere else. So like I already just said that, but let's look at it here. So if we, we're going to create, the way this is really going to work is we're going to create directories for the backup file. So we're going to make a backup of each disk. BHD is going to be converted into a .tar file. And then when we're, we're also going to need a directory, we're actually going to put the VHD once we rehydrate it and register that. So that directory work gets done in this script and you can do all this by hand. There's plenty of sites out there to do this or you could try and figure out what the script's doing. Um, and you can term, then we terminate the distribution. We create a tar backup of the VHD. We unregister this with um, a WSL, and that removes the registration and deletes the VHD. Man, you got to create this backup before you do this unregister thing. And then we're going to do an import, and we're going to create the V. And that what's gonna, that's going to do is it's going to create a VHD from the backup, and then it's going to register the distribution using that VHD. And the last thing we can do is we can set the imported distribution as the default if you want to. So every time you can have a default distribution or not, I don't tend to worry about the default distribution because I target directly. And then after that, we may have some cleanup to do. We may need to add <coughs> a, a default user to WSL.conf on that. <clears throat> and that's because the default user, which one you shell into by default, is actually a registry entry and the import doesn't let you set that. That's a defect in my opinion. I'm sure there's an outstanding bug request for it. So that's that. Um, and so basically we have this set of scripts, this one script here, and this readme file uh, kind of walks you through the size. I give some examples on the sizing of this. Actually, I can show you this. So in my case, I had uh, Ubuntu and Kali on my machine. And when I did a fresh install of them, um, this one isn't dated because I did it differently. Uh, so a fresh Kali install was 500K and then a one with Kex, which gives you Linux GUI with Kali with one command. It's so freaking it's cool. Um, that was three gig. And then when I did a full Kali install I, and I the commands are in the readme file, um, th that turned out to be 18 gig. And then the default Ubuntu with no graphical interfaces about turned out after bringing it up to date was about 1.6 gig. So it just gives you an idea. In my case, I have plenty of space on a tertiary drive, right on this K drive, I drive. Um, this is like an 800 gigger. And so it was no big deal for me to back up these pretty big files, uh, disk drives that became these files and then re-import them actually on my machine, WSL and WSL export. So you can see my two machines here, right? Um, are both on the same drive. So this became my WSL drive really. Well, it's WSL and virtual machines. Okay, so, so that's what we did, right? We had, I run this tool, it makes these backups. And then it, no, oh, that won't go anywhere. And then it goes uh, and saves that file and then does an import. Okay, so for this particular uh, script, right? So move distributions, does this. I have some output here to show you. So in this case, I ran this thing, uh, move the distribution, 
WS distribution, first thing it does is it checks to see if Kali Linux exists, and it's going to move it to my I drive, and then it's going to terminate it, and I, that's a typo. And then it exports it to the tar file, and it tells you what the status is, and then it unregistered the existing instance of Kali Linux, and then it imports Kali Linux um, with that name uh, using this location from the tar file that was generated, and then it sets the default. In my case here, these say non-destructive. There's a mode in this program. These last three steps could be non-destructive just so you can make sure it works. Um, and the Kali Linux was already the default here. And that's it, right? So that's the output of this program. Let me make that smaller. So the important parts of this, and again, you don't have to use my program, right? I, I think it's cool. Um, and I'll show you where it's at again. Right, I think it's cool. GitHub Freeman Soft WSL2 Utils, right? The only one in here is this move distribution. But I get it if you want to run your own command. There's a bunch of stuff out there. Big thing is what's the source name? What's the WSL registration name? Where are we going to export the backup file to go to? And what kind of file name do we want? That's how we end up with these guys, where every time you make a backup, so you can actually take snapshots. Hey, before I did an update to this WSL thing, I'm going to run a backup on it, and then I'm going to build these other snapshots, and I can always import them later under different names or recover what I needed to by hand. I don't have a recovery script right now. And then the, the destination dish directory here, so we, we put the tar file in WSL export, and we put the destination in WSL. And um, you can actually rename the source here. You can, it's called Kali Linux, but you could call it like Kali Linux old or something. And then we've got to decide whether we're going to make this destination as the default. In my case, it is. And then the last thing here is execute, unregister, and import. And I set it to false, and that is why we see these non-destructive. These are really just echoing the command that would, you know, that print statement that would run if we actually did it, but it didn't actually make those changes. So there's a little bit of safety in this script. There's a, anyway, but the main thing, I think, really, is that if you're going, you can use this script, and if you don't want to use it, you can still look at this docs. It describes kind of the steps that are required to, and it also describes down in here what kind of change you need to make to say it's not the default user, and it describes why you have to do this, points at some blog links about it, and it's super easy here to make Kali Linux run WSLG with graphics. I hope that was useful. It was longer than I expected, considering a lot of blogs are out there about it. Have a great day, and if you need to move your WSL instance, uh, look at the docs other places, look at the docs here, or try this script, uh, but test it first.